Welcome to this week's episode of Morning Report Emergency Medicine. I'm Alec Weir. This is the case of in the face! In the face! A 30-year-old male presents with the chief complaint of left eye pain after getting hit in the eyeball by a taser barb. He was tased during an altercation in which he was hit with two barbs in the chest, one barb in the abdomen, and one to that left eye. For those of you not familiar, this is what a taser barb looks like. This is what he was hit with. Let's take a minute and talk about barb removal. Most police departments across the country can remove their own barbs, but in the case of a civilian taser injury, or if your police department can't, these will be coming to the emergency department. What you have to do is anesthetize the area, grab the barb as close to the skin as possible with a needle driver, and remove that barb perpendicular to the skin. Now remember, it is a barb. If it gets caught, you can use an 11 blade as needed to help open up the skin. The barbs were removed successfully from the patient's chest and abdomen, but here's the patient's CT scan. You can see that metal foreign body within the left globe. And then, on the sagittal view, Again, you can see that metal taser barb within the left eye. The official read, metallic foreign body within the left globe with associated soft tissue edema and likely ruptured globe, no evidence of acute fracture. So let's talk about ruptured globe, let's talk about ocular injury. This can be from either blunt or penetrating trauma. We'll classically present with a teardrop shaped pupil and you wanna look for Seidel's sign on exam. Seidel's sign is when you stain the eye with fluorescein, you have aqueous fluid that's flowing or streaming out of that anterior chamber across the anterior surface of the cornea. It's gonna be pouring out onto the patient's cheek. You wanna use CT or ultrasound to look for the foreign body within the patient's globe. And remember, your CT scan makes cuts at certain sizes. So if it's a small foreign body, ultrasound may be more sensitive if you're comfortable with it. And then do not, I repeat, do not check these patients' intraocular pressures. If they have an open globe, all you're going to be doing is adding more pressure and forcing more aqueous fluid out of their eye. Here's a picture that came to me from two of our residents. This patient has that classic teardrop-shaped pupil. Here's where the foreign body entered, and the flow of fluid has actually pulled that iris out of the defect in the eye, and that's what you're seeing here. This is the iris protruding from the laceration. For ruptured globe, you wanna make sure to put an eye shield over that eye to prevent any pressure on the globe. You wanna update the patient's tetanus and then give them broad spectrum IV antibiotics. And I'm talking big guns. At our shop, this is bank and cefepime. The reason for this is because it prevents post-traumatic endophthalmitis. What's so bad about endophthalmitis is that not only can you lose vision in the eye that's been affected, but you'll develop an autoimmune response that will attack the other eye and you'll end up blind in both. And of course, ophthalmology has to be made aware of this patient. Admit to medicine, what? Why was this patient admitted to medicine? This is an ophthalmology slam dunk. Well, while the patient was on telemetry monitoring when they were in their bed waiting, they had this arrhythmia. They were having frequent arrhythmias and this is the one that was caught on EKG. And now there are studies that say there's no risk for arrhythmia from a taser injury to the chest. And usually with taser injuries, what you would expect, if you have anything, is tachycardia or a tachyarrhythmia. But this is a bradyarrhythmia. We're missing beats here. Now my thought is that this is related to the oculocardiac reflex vagal nerve stimulation from his eye injury. But over the course of his hospital stay, no repeat arrhythmias, nothing seen on his telemetry, not of really any consequence. Our take-home points for this case, taser barb removal. You will see this. This is actually pretty common. You want to have the tools to do it. I use a laceration kit, an 11 blade, and lidocaine if I need it. And then remember to grab that barb as close to the skin as possible and remove completely perpendicular. And for open globe injuries, you can diagnose it on exam with that irregularly shaped pupil or with Seidel's sign. Remember, do not check the intraocular pressures on these patients. You want to get a CT scan or use ultrasound to look for foreign body, but remember, be very careful with pressure of that ultrasound on that ruptured globe. You want to treat with a shield to prevent any pressure on that eye, update their tetanus, and then broad-spectrum IV antibiotics to prevent that post-traumatic endophthalmitis and get ophthalmology on board because this patient needs to go to the operating room. Watch for those arrhythmias. In this case, I don't think it's related to the taser injury. I think it's more related to the oculocardiac reflex. And again, it was of no consequence. I just thought it was interesting. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Weir underscore Alec or subscribe to this channel on YouTube for more updates from Morning Report Emergency Medicine. Keep your eyes out for those interesting cases.